I, I think there's some kind of um, uh, kind of media padding when it comes to calling out the Roosters or, or someone like James Tedesco, who's been a legend of the game. And when we look back on his career and the older he gets, the, the higher up the, the ladder he'll go when it comes to fullbacks and, and arguments about Slater versus Tedesco and Boyovich and all this stuff. But he's, he's struggling, and, and the Roosters refuse to make a decision on Tedesco um, mm. when it comes to their attack. And I think that they're struggling um, across the team to, to to work out how how can we win games, but also um, keep Tedesco in the game as well. With and and he's yeah he's a great player, and and I hate knocking him because he's a, a local from from this way as well. well um, mate, he, um, he, he, Tigers, he, he, but... he he severed all ties when he went to. Uh... Went to the to the latte sippers, so yeah, you can you can rip into him, mate. They're, they're, oh, mate, that, they're, that, they're that, frauds. They're, the whole the whole the, the whole club is is frauds. Like the the, the and, and I'm I'm serious about this. The lack of criticism that Trent Robinson has got as Roosters coach, and then he go, he comes in there like a petulant little child every every Friday night or every Sunday afternoon. If your side doesn't win, it's because the the referees screwed the Roosters over. If they did win, it's because his players were were courageous. It's the same as when Har- Hargreaves does a high shot; he's been hard done by. Um, but then if if uh, Tedesco gets uh, gets knocked out and gets a swinging arm across the chin, then the uh, the person should be up for for, for first degree murder. It's yeah, it, it's utterly mm-hmm. it's utterly ridiculous. I, I can't stand them as a club. I can't stand them. Like I. I think uh, I think there's such double standards. Uh, I think the the media is so far in the pockets of, of Nick Politis that they refuse to write even the slightest criticism of of Trent Robinson. Like I think Gordon Tallis summed it up beautifully on NRL 360 last night. He, they were talking about Brad Arthur, Brad Arthur being under pressure at Pen, uh, Parramatta, and probably rightfully so. But he said, "Why we're we not talking about Trent Robinson? Uh, look at the the players they've had." So I just hope we heap more misery on them, Curtin, and, and in ourselves uh, can can get that third win. In a row and, and keep the momentum going. Yeah, and, and it's funny that you mentioned Trent Robinson and particularly the the shots of him um, in the in the box um, in games and and how um, how agitated he is this year. I, I, I think he's feeling the pressure up this year, and I think we're seeing that. In other years, we've seen a cool, calm, collected Trent Robinson talk about Toulouse yeah. and, and the future of the yeah. game, international game, and all this stuff. And like I, I remember just having a flashback of watching a post the post match game on, on nine, and he's sitting in the um, in the dressing room. He looks very suave. He's he's waiting for his players to come back in. Um, he's got his legs crossed and he's very chilled. Um, I, I think we're starting to see the pressure on 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 Robinson. I, mm. and, and look, it's uh, if if you haven't gone back and read it. Red V and I'm listeners. I, I did write a, a big article about Robinson and the fact that on your way up, it, it's easy to get to the top of the mountain, but don't forget anyone on your way back down because that that, that people will remind you. Um, that, and some of the things Robinson has said recently, like you said, some some things he says about decisions on field, but but also the fact he copped a shellacking online for for mm. saying that that picking Michael Jennings um, yeah, that's, isn't yeah, yeah. disrespectful to women. Yeah. When when his ex wife was was um, supposedly supposed to get five hundred grand out of Michael Jennings in civil court, and not a, a penny has been paid apparently, um, where he was accused of raping and bashing his ex wife. He's got the tact of a sledgehammer, Robinson. He's uh, he doesn't care about anything about results, uh, it, but results. His whole demeanour has changed, Jack. Mm. His whole demeanour has changed, and I think the pressure's on him because he's been found um, out, Kurt. He's been found out in twenty thirteen. He had Sonny Bill Williams who was a generational talent and they, they won a premiership there. And then the other two premierships they won, Cooper Cronk was effectively the captain coach of the side. And, and, and that's not coming from me. There's been plenty of other people that have, have, been, have, have been putting that narrative out. And it's a true narrative as well because now Tedesco is, is running, on, running on old legs and, and destroys any type of attack they have. So I, th- that, I don't want to keep talking about the Roosters because, yeah, they're, 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 a, they're a club that I... I that I, I just want to I want to beat so badly, but yeah, they're, they're right for the picking. This isn't this isn't the the Roosters of 2018 and 2019 that could put 40 or 44 on the Dragons in, in in quick time. This is a side that I think if we can control that middle third of the field, we can really cause them some headaches. And I think with the aggression that that guys like Jaden Sewer and Hame Sele and even Jack DeBell and, and Murdoch Masilla bring off the bench, then I think we can we can hold it with them. 
Yeah, and, and look, the other thing, that, and for the Dragons as well, and, and I don't usually like coming out and saying you need to uh, bash the, the little blokes, but for, for the Roosters, um, and you are talking about concussions and stuff like this, the, the Roosters have had to medically retire some of their, their biggest players the club's ever had in recent years. Mm. Um, and Kiri's, and I'm not saying you need to knock Kiri out to win the game. That that would be an awful thing to say. But what I am saying is you've got Sam Walker and Kiri there. Um, there there's doubts in those playmakers and in, in what they can and can't do with, with the, the players or the stock or the way they're playing. So if you can get into to Sam Walker or get into the ribs of Kiri um, and get him early and get him maybe a little bit gun-shy, uh, from the outside in, and and maybe uh, work together defensively, and 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 push up on on uh, in those corridors where you defend together. I, I think that goes a long way to winning the game. I I, I think the Roosters, like mm. you said, I, I mean, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that the Roosters uh, or the Dragons put forty or fifty on, on no, the Roosters no. on Thursday, but I think they can win comfortably if if they're prepared to do what they've done the last couple of weeks. What's your score prediction, Kurt? I'm going to go Dragons twenty six. Um, the East Boys 12. Uh, I'm not far off. I've got 24-10, Dragons. Well, let's hope uh, those uh, those things come true. It would be a huge two points and certainly, um, yeah, really boy the Dragons. Also boy us as, as fans and, and shoot uh, for three straight wins. Should be a cracker. A Thursday afternoon out there at Allianz Stadium. Before we uh, answer your fans' corner questions, uh, let's just have a quick look at the lower grades for the Dragons. And we'll lead with uh, the SG Ball because, uh, as you would know, fans, the the St. George Dragons SG Ball side qualified for the grand final uh, after a thumping win against Newcastle last week. They won 36 points to four, and they'll play the Canterbury-Bankstown Bulldogs uh, in the decider. Uh, That's going to be happening at uh, Combank Stadium, 3.15 p.m. on Saturday. If you can't get out there, uh, the New South Wales Rugby League does have the live stream of the game. Meanwhile, our under-19 women's, uh, the Steelers, uh, they're in the Tasha Gale Cup final against the Knights at 1.30. So those games play, being played uh, right after one another, so to speak. Uh, but for the SG ball side, they uh, line up like this. Tyler Peckham-Harris is the fullback, the wingers, Zach Nashar, and Jesse Williams, who's been absolutely superb, scoring tries for fun on the wings. David Afu and Lyric Craft. Moninawi uh, in the centres with Shadi Hamoud and Brandon Tikkenau, the halves. Up front, Ryan Hutchison, Isaiah Fagalilo and Loco Junior Pacific Tonga. Well, a back row of Jacob Halangahu, Cyrus Stanley Trail and Finn Alatu, probably the best back row in the competition. And a bench of Angus Clark, Corey Akers, William Hakila and Risiate Smythe as they and they are coached by Willie Talao. So best of luck to the boys. They've had a marvellous season. Hopefully they can finish it off uh, with, uh, with a fantastic performance and it would be great to have that little bit of silver Silverware um, at Cogra uh, for the St. George SG ball side. Meanwhile, in the Tasha Gale Cup, uh, they'll be playing at 1.30, as I mentioned, uh, at Combank Stadium on Saturday. Uh, Herawaka Pahatu is at the fullback uh, position for the Steelers. Darcy Eid and Maria Paseca on the wings with Indy Bostock, who's had a great season. And Mia Rose, uh, Rose Walsh, who scored a hat-trick in the win uh, in their preliminary final winners in the centres. Evie McGrath and Casey Ray are in the centres. Hope Millard, Chelsea Seville and Ella Costa in the front row. And a back row, <coughs> excuse me, of Charlotte Basham, Michaela McFadden, and Sienna Yo. While the bench is Bianca Jones, Rian Yo, uh, Brielle Lichitti, uh, Lichitti, I should say, uh, and Bronte Wilson in 17. So uh, best of luck to those two sides. We'll, of course, have updates for you on our social media as well. In the Dragons, lower grades. It was a disappointing weekend for the Dragons in both Jersey Flag and in the New South Wales Cup. New South Wales Cup, the Dragons considered a try with time expiring to lose 26-24 to the Warriors after they had just taken the lead back. It was a, a pretty disappointing performance, a pretty ill-disciplined performance by the Dragons in reserve grade, uh, and they'll be looking to uh, to change things this week. It's a double header uh, down at Collegians. Again, uh, Jersey Flag take on the Roosters at 11.15, while the knock-on effect New South Wales Cup side. They'll play the Roosters at 1 p.m. and just quickly running through the reserve grade side. Matt Fiennay, the fullback and captain. Sione Finau and Sevelia Tamale on the wings with Max Fiennay and Ben Johnson the centres. Josh Ralph is in the 5'8th role. Jesse Marshke is the halfback. Alex Tuodavake and Villian Fafita in the front row with Mal Arzen, the hooker, back row of Dylan Egan, Ryan Couchman and Toby Couchman moving from the front row into that lock position and a bench of Harley Finau, Dan Russell, Josh Corrick and Jackson Sherub. So the best of luck to the boys uh, there. Jersey Flake also looking to bounce back. They lost a topsy-turvy game to the Warriors by 28 points to 22. Both sides looking to just get a little bit of confidence and a little bit of momentum back uh, for those lower grade games this weekend. Well, before we finish off the podcast, let's run through an 